Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. Today we'll be talking about some of the news topics from across the country and the weekend. I'm Jay. And I'm Alex. This ad is brought to you by Carzuno, the easiest way to lease a brand new car in Thailand. And we're going to start with our first story today. Some bad news for expats and foreigners living in Thailand. Uh, well, especially the visitors coming to Thailand who will be facing heavier scrutiny in order to rehabilitate the tourism sector. Thailand is intensifying its surveillance and screening of foreigners in major crackdown aimed at enhancing the country's tourism image. Directed by the Royal Thai Police Deputy Chief, the crackdown involves revoking visas of individuals without a valid presence or linked to criminal activities. This increased scrutiny affects all aspects of foreign visits, including entries, exits, and visa-related procedures with a particular focus on crimes and any connections to criminal organizations. Since October 2023, over 600 arrests have been made for various offenses, highlighting the government's stringent measures mm. against criminal activities by foreigners. High-profile cases such as the incarceration and subsequent banning of two New Zealand tourists for assaulting a police officer and the revocation of a Swiss man's visa for assault underscore the seriousness of Thailand's efforts to safeguard its reputation as a safe and legal destination for international visitors. Now, look, mm. the only people who need to worry about this are people who've actually had a criminal past in general, not the usual. Tourists. No, there's also the fact that, uh, look, there's a million digital nomads out here, right? Okay. There's people yeah. that find work abroad mm. and, or like that make their income abroad yeah. and then they just want to be in Thailand, mm. right? So they're trying to crack down on those kinds yeah. of people too that are, that are here without a valid reason to be okay. here. No Fair work enough. permits something like yeah. that. I mean, as long as you're not overstaying your visas, as long as you're making sure that your entries are looking good, should be okay. However, yeah, I mean, uh, you might be facing some tougher questions at customs now. Questions. Mm, yeah, questions. Why are you here? Yeah, Why are you here? It's Thailand. Everybody but wants to. I like the fact that they're cracking down on this. Thailand mm. in general has always been extremely safe. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have pride myself in telling my friends overseas that like I don't have to worry about leaving my car mm. or motorbike even unlocked, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and leaving my helmet on on top of my motorbike yeah. or or just the the. You can go out at night any at any point and well, not yeah. be scared on the streets. I think the concerns here are not about the, the local ties. It's the concerns yeah. about the, the farangs that have been behaving badly lately and just well, sort of so like, you imagine uh, imagine you walking down the street yeah. and you walk into a drunk farang. Yeah, exactly. Look, just don't go viral. You yeah. should be okay, okay? Yeah. Like And once again, the disclaimer, issue. there's always a few people who ruin it for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So as an expat and foreigner in Thailand myself. Kudos for you being for being a good tourist and good person in Thailand. And for those of you who are bad, stop it. Yes, exactly. Well said, my friend. <laughs> um, all right. Well, anyways, we're going to move on to a little bit of a, a, a tragic news. There was a, a, a horrific accident that claimed three lives over the weekend in oh, Phuket. No with uh, one more still critically injured. Uh, now, a tragic motorbike collision in Phuket on Wiset Road, Rawai, claimed the lives of two foreign men and a Thai woman, while an 18-year-old Thai woman was injured and hospitalized. The accident occurred early at around 2.48 a.m. and was recorded by CCTV, prompting Chalong police to respond. At the scene, two severely damaged motorbikes, a Honda Click and a Yamaha YZF-R1, were found. The victims include a 36-year-old Russian man, a 52-year-old Swedish man, and a 44-year-old Thai woman from Rawai, with ongoing investigations to ascertain the crash's cause. Preliminary reports suggest the Russian and young Thai woman were on the Honda, while the Swedish man and the 44-year-old Thai woman were on the Yamaha at the collision time. Additional damage was noted to two other bikes parked nearby, with efforts to notify the deceased next of kin underway. Uh, yeah, 2.48 a.m., mm. uh, the uh, bikes were going way too fast, apparently. Like, like the the state of the bikes, they were uh, like disintegrated. They basically yeah. like exploded, and uh, yeah, uh, two dead, like pretty much on uh, on collision. Mm. So really, be careful down there, guys. Especially if you're getting around late at night on bikes, uh, just slow down. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. Just slow down. Don't do it, guys. It's not definitely not worth it. Mm -mm. All right, we're um, gonna move on to our next story, uh, which uh, unfortunately is uh, another not so um, nice story. The Thai government is responding to a coordinated attack of over 40 arsons all in one night. Mm -hmm. In response to 44 coordinated insurgent fires across Yala, Patani, Narathiwat, and Songkhla, Thai Prime Minister Sri Thavisin has pledged government aid and reparation for the victims. The incidents occurring within a short time frame from one 
a.m. to 1.45 a.m. on a Friday during Ramadan uh, prompted an investigation led by acting National Police Chief Kitarat Panpet. Prime Minister Seta also engaged in discussions with Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim acknowledging Malaysia's role in mediating peace talks with southern rebel groups. The attacks are speculated to demonstrate insurgent strength amidst relaxed security measures. The fires resulted in one casualty, a female construction worker from Myanmar, a significant property damage. Efforts to address the aftermath include the establishment of a joint compensation center in Yala and an adi- additional funding from the World Bank of the Thai Health Promotion Foundation to support recovery in the affected regions. Yeah, the um, the this I, I don't know. There's been a, a flare up. I don't know if you heard about what happened in mm. Russia in yeah. Moscow over the weekend as well. Um, seems like a lot of this uh, militant and insurgent activity is mm. is uh, ramping up lately. So hopefully Thailand can get a lockdown on that. Yeah. In the south. Well, it, it's always been going on actually, yeah. like in the south, like insurgency and some say terrorism and this and that. But um, mm. yeah, ho- yeah. Hopefully they can figure something out. They haven't been. They've been quiet for a while, but mm-hmm. every now and then they come back Indeed. and make some noise again. 40 arsons in one night. Mm-hmm. That's some noise, that's for sure. Uh, well, anyways, I have our strangely behaving farang of the day. Okay. Uh, so after displaying erratic behavior in Thailand, a Canadian man was arrested in Vancouver for displaying the same conduct. Now, in downtown Vancouver, Canada, Kent Douglas Meads, a man whose actions mirror the dichotomy of the fictional character Jekyll and Hyde, went on a violent spree alarming the public. Now, having been in Thailand previously where he displayed similar erratic behavior, Meads, recently released on probation, attacked several individuals unprovoked, leading to his arrest. The series of attacks, including stabbings and causing a disturbance in a coffee shop, prompted responses from Vancouver's mayor and police chief, highlighting concerns over Meads' mental health and criminal justice justice system's ability to manage such individuals. Meads faces multiple charges and authorities are concerned there may be more victims. This incident has sparked debate about the need for systemic changes in handling individuals with a history of violent and unpredictable behavior. Yeah, this is an interesting story because uh, people break down in Thailand all the time. There are Mm. mental breaks in Thailand all the time. We report on it a lot and it sucks that it gets to that point Mm. because there isn't enough of a mental health infrastructure here when people are starting to feel or be erratic, right? There's no, no real way to report them outside of going through the criminal justice system. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, something that uh, I think Asia could do better in general is approach uh, mental health uh, a little more seriously. Hmm. My thoughts? Yours? Yeah. Uh, don't have any. I'm going <laughs> to move on. Mm-hmm. To our, I'm going to move on to our next story today. Now, you spoke a little bit earlier about mm. how many foreigners there are in Bangkok mm-hmm. and Thailand in general and working illegally. Mm-hmm. Well, a prominent influencer yoga instructor has been arrested for illegal operations. Mm. A Polish yoga instructor identified as Mishai uh, and possibly known as Mishai Kali Griggs on social media was arrested for operating without a license on the resort island of Gopangan, Thailand. The arrest took place at the Tantra Movement School during the afternoon of March 23rd. At the time of his arrest, two foreigners were present, claiming to be clients. Michael admitted to running three-day yoga courses on weekends, charging between $400 to $600 per course, despite lacking the necessary operational license. Additionally, uh, Michal is known to be active as a YouTuber as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're putting all that stuff using social media to advertise yourself out here, you might mm. want to get your paperwork in order mm. uh, for operating those kinds of classes. Yeah, how mm. good's your yoga? Uh, not good mm. at all. Like uh, was <laughs> the the other day, a zombie and I went for a shoot where we had to wake up early for a yoga class. Mm-hmm. They made fun of zombie for being so uh, for for not being too flexible. I couldn't even participate in this oh. yoga class. I okay. was just so uh, I'm I'm like as stiff as a board. Mm. How about you? Uh, <laughs> I'm actually. Quite nimble and flexible, oh, believe, yeah? believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> well, I grew up doing taekwondo, so uh, they broke my bones and muscles to uh, make me very flexible. To reshape you into the yeah. man we see today. Pretty there. much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, um, on to our last story of the day. So Thailand, after being snubbed by Taylor Swift, Ooh. is uh, is uh, reinventing itself as a concert destination for the world. Yeah. That's right. So Thailand is positioning itself as a global festival hub with plans to host internationally redou- renowned music festivals like Summer Sonic and Tomorrowland as part of a strategy to boost economic activity by attracting significant international events. Spearheaded by Prime Minister and Finance Minister Sreta Tavisin, the initiative aims to highlight Thailand as a key global event destination, building on successful discussions with organizers of major events like Formula One, Formula E, and Art Basel. 
Thailand has secured the rights to host Summer, Summer Sonic at the Impact Arena in August, mar uh, marking its first instance outside Japan in Southeast Asia and will welcome Tomorrowland in 2026, with options to continue for nine years. This effort, driven personally by PM Sreta, is expected to generate substantial economic benefits for Thai citizens, underlining the country's potential and readiness as a world-class event venue. Tomorrowland in Thailand! Woo! Dun, dun. Who needs Taylor. Mm, sorry, we got other things. If Tomorrowland actually comes to Thailand, that was going to be huge, I know. man. Yeah. That's going to be big. I know. Well, yeah. Do they have Tomorrowland outside of Europe? I think it's just in Germany. No, it's just it? Belgium. Belgium, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, so that's big. Too. Yeah. And same with uh, Summer Sonic. Summer but Sonic's a big... it makes sense. You know, yeah. there's one in Europe and one in Thailand. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Come on. Yeah. We're getting there. And uh, obviously, Rolling Loud is, is up later this year. So we still so got Wonder Fruit. Yeah, they're like, going to have Wonder festivals. Fruit, Rolling mm -hmm. Loud, Tomorrowland, Palulu. Oh, sorry. Palupo. Palupo. Yeah. There's a lot of music festivals. Maybe when Lollapalooza gets out here. Uh, yeah. I like that. Some alt rock. That's Ooh. my thing. <laughs> Yeah, love that band. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those were some of the news topics from across the country today. There are, of course, more stories mm. on thetiger.com that you can catch up on politics, gossip, crime, mm. happy news, sad news, yeah. everything and more. Mm -hmm. This ad is brought to you by Carzuno, the easiest way to lease a brand new car in Thailand.